Hi Cricketers, thank you for watching another one of my videos. Today I'm going to be sharing some really important information with you. Um, it's information that I have gathered through three years of owning my own Cricut business. Today's video is super helpful for anybody who has a Cricut machine and is interested in starting a business or if you have a business and you want to improve it. Um, I'm going to share a bunch of tips with you about how to run a more profitable business, how you can make more money. So follow these tips that I provide, watch the video till the end, and I promise that you will learn a lot of helpful information. And if you do enjoy this video and learn something, I would love if you liked and subscribed to my channel. Just like you want your small business to grow, I really want my small business to grow. And the way that I do that is by sharing content and having you like and comment and subscribe. So let's work together and help grow each other's small businesses. This is Maddie. She's my little love bug. I'll let her stay for the video just because she's so cute and sweet. Alright, so let's dive right into tip number one. Tip number one is to sell items that have an add-on item. For example, like a mommy and me shirt. Something that you always have to buy something else with. So like during Easter time, I sell these Easter baskets. And I'm not just going to sell one Easter basket, I'm also going to sell a variety of bunnies that go with the basket. I would sell them personalized, and in order for me to increase my profit margins with these bunnies, I would give people the option to personalize one ear for $15 or two ears for $20. And by doing that, I had a lot more $20 sales versus $15 sales. And my customers like that because maybe they don't want to spend $20 on a personalized Easter Bunny. So they have the option to only spend $15 and still get a cute product. So by thinking about things that typically go together, like Easter baskets with a bunny, I'm doubling my sales. I sell these baskets for $15 and the bunnies for $15 to $20. So for this set right here, people are paying $30 to $35 versus just the basket for $15. There's a lot of things that go together, like when I sell my birth announcement elephants. When I sell my birth announcement elephants, I also give people the option to add on a onesie or a bib. And when you show people all these different designs and they're super cute, maybe they weren't originally planning on buying a onesie, but when they fall in love with it, it kind of goes together and makes a great gift. Some other things that people buy two or more of would be his and her gifts, like for weddings. Um, bridal party gifts, you know, when you have a bridal party, it's probably five people on the bride side, five people on the groom side. So by focusing on selling something like bridal party gifts, you're guaranteed to get five or more sales versus selling a shirt just by itself that you'll maybe get one sale for. Another thing I see people buy a lot of in a set would be the Christmas pajamas. Um, they like to buy them for the whole family so they all match. So you're not just going to sell one shirt to dad, you're going to sell one to dad, mom, brother, sister, everybody in the family, even the dog sometimes. Always have an add-on item and find things that go together so you can increase your profits and sell more. Let's move on to tip number two. And that tip is to find projects that use a very small amount of vinyl. Vinyl can get expensive and you don't want to be blowing through it. If I was going to make an adult shirt, I would be using about a 12 by 12 sheet of vinyl. Now compare that to this itty bitty onesie, I'm probably only going to be using a 3 by 3 inch piece of vinyl. So I could make 9 onesies on the same piece of vinyl compared to one adult shirt. And if you go on Etsy and you look, people are selling these onesies for almost the same price as an adult t-shirt. Also think about how much money that vinyl costs. So I went on Amazon and I saw that um, a three pack of Sizer Easy Weed 12 by 12 inch sheets were selling for 
$11.99. So to make an adult shirt with a 12 by 12 inch design, it's going to cost you $3.99 in vinyl. Now to make this onesie with that same sheet of vinyl, I only need 3 by 3 inches. So I can use 44 cents worth of vinyl. I got that by dividing $3.99 by 9 because that's how many of the designs I could fit on the, the page. So you're talking $3.99 worth of vinyl or $0.44 cents worth of vinyl. You can also save money on your vinyl by buying it in bulk. I always buy the biggest rolls that I can get. You want to find projects that use the least amount of vinyl. And also don't get overwhelmed by all the vinyl that is out there. I know that there are so many different colors and patterns, but for the most part, most of my projects use black or white vinyl. Like you can see the sign right here, it's black vinyl. And what else I got? This lantern, black vinyl. Almost everything I use is either black or white vinyl. That's not to say that I never use things with color, but if I do, I usually get like a multi-pack of just the smaller sheets because I use so little of it. On to Cricut tip number three. Sell things that cost more money. For example, I see tons of people selling these elves around Christmas time. Um, they're from the dollar store. They Obviously it only costs a dollar and you put a name on them and you sell them for five dollars. So I have to sell 100 elves at five dollars a piece to make five hundred dollars and that's not even counting the cost of the elves or the material. Now if I was to sell this elephant for thirty dollars I would have to sell way less of it. I would have to sell 17 of these elephants to make five hundred dollars. Would you rather sit there banging out a hundred elves or 17 elephants? I would rather make 17 of something than 100 of something. If you sell things that cost more money, you will make more money. Don't just flood your, your Etsy store or Facebook with $5 items. It's good to have a mix. I like to have some things that cost a lot of money and then some things that cost a little bit of money. Give people choices and also give yourself the opportunity to make more money. That's what having a business is about. You want to make as much money as you can. On to Cricut business tip number four. Sell things with a higher profit margin. Just because you get something and it's very inexpensive, it doesn't mean that you can't charge more money for that. Businesses do it all the time. That's how they make money. If you buy a Keurig at the store for, I don't even know how much they cost, $150 or something, I guarantee you that that store is not buying that from China for $120. They're probably buying it for like $40 and having a huge markup. So you can also do that with your business. Find things that you can mark up and that look really great so that people won't know that it's actually a cheap item. I'm going to give you an example. In the comments, I want you guys to write how much you think it costs me to make this This Is Us sign and how much you think that I could sell this for. I'll wait. Would you believe that this tile only cost me $1.93 plus the vinyl? So I probably like under $3. I turn around and I sell it for $25 to $30. And I'm going to tell you why I do that. Because I can. People are paying for the design. They're paying for the personalization. What you're selling is a piece of art. I could sell this for $10 or $15 and still make a profit. But I don't want to make a small profit, I want to make a big profit because I'm trying to run a business. Another project example of something that you could buy for cheap and sell for more would be these Easter baskets and bunnies. The baskets I get for $5 and then I turn around and I sell them for $15. These bunnies cost me, I think it was like $5.98 and then I sell them for $15 to $20. So there is a big price markup um, that allows me to make some money with the business. There are other things that you have to factor in, like the amount of time it takes you to design and communicate with these people and make it and ship it. Um, you have to go to the store and buy these things. A lot of the best deals I find you don't get on the computer, you get by going to a brick and mortar store. Like Walmart never has these bunnies online and if they do they sell out so fast, but if you go to your store you can look out and you can get them, but that takes time and your time is valuable. We're all busy, so don't cut yourself short. Make sure you're paying yourself. Another example of a project with a high profit margin would be these memorial lanterns. 
Um, they're really pretty. You can personalize them. Um, this is a design that I made myself that says, I'll hold you in my heart until I can hold you in heaven. I bought these lanterns at Ocean State Job Lot for $8.99. I sell these at a couple different price points. So if I was going to sell this with just the heart and not personalized, I would sell this for $25. Then if you want to personalize it, that would be a $10 markup. So $35 to have this personalized. You can also do some really cool things with these lanterns, like take a photo of somebody who has passed away and put it into an app that will convert it into a black and white picture. And then you can put that picture into design space and then put that picture on a lantern. Um, it takes a lot of work for me to make the image look really good, a lot of Photoshop and editing. I spend several hours getting those pictures to look perfect because this is somebody's loved one who passed away. Like You want to take your time and make sure you're making a really good product. So for those photo memorial lanterns, I would charge $60, $75 like starting just for the photo lanterns. And then I would offer other kind of add-ons. Like another cool thing you can do with your Cricut is you can take somebody's signature off of a card and then you can put it into design space. So you can actually transfer their writing right onto the glass. So even though this lantern cost me $8.99, I'll sell it for a minimum of $25. And then $35 if you want it personalized. $60 if you want a photo on it, $70 if you want a photo with handwriting, and people will pay it all day long. And they'll pay it because I'm making something that is so special and unique and that almost nobody else is making. You can't go to Walmart and have somebody, you know, put a photo of your deceased loved one onto a lantern with a flameless battery operated flickering candle. Like you're just not going to find it. That's some, you're paying somebody for their custom artwork and that's why you can charge more. So choose your projects wisely and pick things that you can sell for more money than they cost so you can make more money. Okay, tip number five. Choose really good designs. If what you're selling has a great design and it's in demand and in season, then you can charge more money for it. If I was to take this This Is Us sign and just type out the words, this is us, that wouldn't look very pretty. But I went on to Creative Fabrica and I found this This Is Us SVG and I downloaded it and I used that on my sign. And it looks really pretty. I wouldn't have been able to do that just with what came in the software. I know that I use Creative Fabrica in like all of my projects, but that's because I just love that website so much. Um, all of their fonts and graphics are so much better than what I can get from other places. And as a Cricut business owner, it's really important that you're getting designs that have a commercial license. You cannot sell things that are for personal use only. You have to have a commercial license. And in, unless you design that SVG yourself, you can run into trouble. Another reason why I didn't like designing SVGs myself is because I felt like I was just copying other people. So like. I used to go on Etsy and I would see what other people were selling and what was like a hot seller and then I would just change the fonts or the words a little bit and try to make it my own. But I always felt like I was still like stealing that person's designs and I didn't like that. But if you go to Creative Fabrica and buy the SVG from a graphic designer, then I feel like you're doing it the right way. So Creative Fabrica, I pay like $29 a month for their all access plan. It gives me com unlimited commercial access to everything on their website. So like hundreds of thousands of fonts and graphics and craft ideas and get product mock-ups. Like everything you need to run a Cricut business is on that website. For me, it's totally worth it. I always hated getting fonts from Defont because they were always for personal use only. So one way to make more money with your business is by not getting sued and not stealing other people's work and paying people for the designs just like you would want your customers to pay you for what you're making a graphic designer is spending their time and effort to make these designs that you want so they should also be compensated that's how I look at it also if you find that the market is more saturated where you live and people are making similar projects you can make your projects better by choosing better designs I want to challenge you to think of something that you want to make 
and then go to Creative Fabrica and type in that keyword in the search, like for example, mom shirts or fishing shirts or like any kind of thing that you want to make, they probably have a design for. When I discovered Creative Fabrica, it really took my business to the next level because all of my designs and fonts are so pretty now. I don't have to stress out about spending like $3.99 on a font individually because I get everything on the website. If you have a beautiful design to go on a high quality blank, then people are going to buy it. They're going to love it, you're going to have more sales, and you're going to make more money. Alright, tip number six. Now that you are a Cricut business owner, you have to act like a business owner. You have to be professional, you have to use good punctuation, spell your words correctly when you're talking to people. If somebody messages you about something that you're selling, try to message them back right away. If they message you and it takes you, you know, two days to get back to them, then they're probably going to go and buy whatever it is that you're selling from somebody else. I would always be very kind to my customers. Um, I would be friendly, build relationships. One thing that I always like to tell people was thank you for supporting my small business. Um, I got business cards from Vistaprint that said thank you for supporting my small business. I got little stickers on Amazon that go on my gift bags that also said the same thing. Uh, when I would send out my invoices and PayPal, I would leave a little note in the description that said thank you for supporting my small business. I think that a lot of people are really into supporting small businesses nowadays, especially with Amazon like taking over the world. <laughs> so if you like supporting small businesses, make sure you give this video a like, a comment, and a subscribe because that's how I grow my business on YouTube. If people love you and they love the service you provide and the items that you sell, they will keep coming back. It doesn't matter that there could be a hundred other people out there selling birth announcement elephants. My customers keep coming back to me because they love what I sell. I've spent time building that relationship with them. I have my own business page on Facebook where I communicate with them. You can do giveaways. There's lots of ways to build a relationship with your customers. Next is Cricut business tip number seven, and that is take really good pictures of your products. Most likely you are selling your creations online, and so is a lot of other people. So you have to stand out in the crowd. Maybe Stephanie down the road is also selling shirts, but she's just putting her shirt on the floor and taking a picture in bad lighting where you're going on Creative Fabrica and using their product mock-ups to have really great pictures of your products. We are so used to looking at pretty things on our phone, like we use Instagram and Facebook and we're looking at pictures of things. And you want your pictures to be really good, otherwise your customers are going to pick somebody else. Even though there may be a hundred people out there selling birth announcement elephants, your customer has to pick one of them and they're going to pick it by picking the picture that looks the prettiest. Everybody is selling the same item, but their presentation is a little bit different. So you want your presentation to be the best. Make sure you have really good lighting, make sure you're using a good camera, try using product mock-ups online. I have a video on my channel about using product mock-ups. You should check that out, I'll leave a link above. You can buy things like photo boxes on Amazon to get really nice pictures. You could also pay a local photographer. Um, I did that once. I reached out to somebody that I knew who took really nice photos and I said, hey, I'm building my website um, and I want to get really good pictures of my products and I'm not very good at taking pictures. Could you help me out? And her photos were so good and it, my sales definitely went up. Like I made more money because people were so much more in love with my product because it looked better in a picture. Like before, I really knew about taking like super good photos. I would just, like I would take this sign and I would stick it on the ground and just take a picture from above of it. But if you put it on a shelf with next to pretty flowers, like it does make a big difference. We're not shopping with our hands in a store. We can't pick it up, we can't feel it. We are shopping with our eyes. So make sure your products look really good. And that is gonna bring us to my final tip Tip number eight, and that is market yourself. It doesn't matter if you have beautiful projects and beautiful pictures if nobody is seeing them. You need to put your items right in people's faces all the time without being spammy or obnoxious. 
With social media, it's actually very easy to do. I like to think about fishing when it comes to marketing. So like if I'm trying to catch a fish, I can cast one line out there and maybe I'll catch a fish. But if I was to take 10 fishing poles and put them all in the water, my chances are that I would get a lot more fish. And it's kind of the same way when you want to market yourself. You want to put yourself in as many different places so that people will find you. I love supporting other Cricut crafters. If you want, you can drop a link in my comments to your Cricut business. I would love to look at it, maybe support you if you're selling something that I like. Think of that as a great opportunity to drop your fishing line in one more place. You never know who's watching. My favorite place to get customers for my Cricut business has been Facebook. I like that I could make a Facebook business page. It's free. Um, you can also make groups. There's a difference, so look it up. So I created my Facebook business page, and then any time that I made something, I would upload it to the page. Then I would share that in various groups. You can find groups of people who are interested in things that you might be selling. My favorite groups have been town groups and mom groups. There are so many different places online where you can sell your things. You could sell things on Facebook Marketplace, Facebook Business Page, Facebook Business Group, both of those that you created, but you can also go into groups that other people create. I love all the local town groups, so I would find like five towns within my vicinity and I would share my post in all those different town groups. You can share your projects on Instagram, um, you can share them on Etsy, on TikTok. Facebook Marketplace is another great spot to sell your things. So like I said, like cast that line in as many different places. Don't just put it up on your one business page and hope that people are going to see it because they're probably not. And you also might have to pay for advertising. Facebook advertising is a good one because they'll run, you can run an ad and they'll put your ad in front of, you know, whatever you select. You can choose your target audience, you can niche down to age or gender or location, you can get very specific. I never did a lot of paid advertising, but I have done it before and it is helpful. It's especially helpful at growing your business page because it puts your page right on people's timelines where they wouldn't normally see it. Another great way to grow your business page is by doing giveaways. People love free stuff and it doesn't even have to be something expensive. Like you could get a dollar store wine glass and put a cute design on it and say I'm doing a giveaway. Um, just like, comment, invite five friends, whatever you want to do and that can help grow your business page. The more customers you have, the more they're going to buy, the more money you're going to make. It's all very important. So that wraps up this video about how to make more money with your Cricut business. Um, I hope that you guys really enjoyed it. I hope you subscribe and keep watching more videos because I have a lot more information to share. I have learned so much in the last three years about what it takes to run your own business. And I look forward to sharing some of that information with you. Want to say bye, Maddie? Say bye! Please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell.